Hello and welcome into the KE Report. Chad and Corey here getting an update on BlackRock Silver, traded on the TSXV under the ticker BRC and on the OTCQX under the ticker BKRRF. And we're joined today with the president and CEO of BlackRock Silver, Andrew Pollard. And Andrew, it's great to get you back on the show to get an update on BlackRock Silver, especially on a day like this where you've put out a PEA on your Tonopah West project. This is the flagship project for the company located along the Walker Lane trend in Nevada. And on this PEA, just the high level numbers I'll share and I'll let you dig into the guts of it for us here. 8.6 8.6 million ounce production at an all-in sustaining cost of around 12 bucks per silver equivalent ounce and an after-tax IRR of 39%. Again, this is a very high-grade project, both silver and gold. Dig into the guts of this PEA, though, and share with us some of the key metrics and takeaways you want investors to know about this preliminary economic assessment. Thanks, Shad and Corey. Yeah, no, good to be back. Listen, it was only four years ago that we, you know, around this time that we were just getting results from our discovery hole of the project. So just this morning, we released our first PEA, establishing baseline credentials for this. And this is going to be a big producer at very low cost. You know, for our base case, we use really conservative numbers, $23 silver and $1,900 gold. And at that, we've got a really good MPV of $323 million after tax, MPV5. Payback of 2.3 years, uh, as you mentioned, high IRR of 39%. And really, it's just a moment in time. You, you know, for this PEA, we actually excluded a lot of ounces from the mine plan. Uh, we've got about 12 million ounces orphaned to the northwest of um, where this PEA leaves off. And right now, we've got a large-scale drill program underway, drilling along one kilometer of strike on this vein corridor which hopefully, you know, we've got 12 million ounces in the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow there. And we think we'll be able to um, link up that mineralization and bring that in. But what we're showing right now, just based off of this is, you know, every single ounce we add here on in is just going to blow out the MPV and IRR. In fact, we use conservative prices, but if you just look at the uh, sensitivity, you know, at, at 2280 gold and 2760 silver, the after-tax MPV of the project escalates to just under $500 million and the IRR ratchets up to 54%. Uh, so, you know, we're in a really, really good position here. This is one of the lowest cash cost silver projects globally right now. And listen, we're not global. We're not in Mexico or Bolivia or Argentina. We're private land off a highway three hours from Vegas with a clear permitting path. So, you know, really the winds that are back here. So, Andrew, with the drilling that's ongoing now, the global resource here is about 100 million ounces silver equivalent. In this mine plan, you have material containing about 75 million ounces. As you said, you have that 12 million ounces in that northwest step out area. But as you're drilling here, is the focus to add ounces or is it to upgrade the 100 million ounces that is in the inferred category? We're doing both. Right now, we've got uh, we've got one kilometer of strike that we're going to be drilling out that's got, aiming to bridge the mineralization to that northwest step-out area where there's 12 million ounces orphans. So that has the potential to not only add significant new tonnage and, and, and ounces, really, but it'll if it all goes according to plan, it'll bring online that additional 12 million ounces. In addition, we've got a lot of drilling underway right now focused on converting the early years of this mine plan here, the early years of production to MNI. And part of that drilling is actually focused on drilling um, near surface mineralization. So the up dip projections of this vein. Now, if we're successful there, that should have the potential to decrease our initial capex because uh, we'll be able to get to uh, production a little quicker and earlier as it'll be shallower. So not only do we have a huge opportunity to add ounces and blow out the MPV and IRR with further drilling, but the CapEx could go down materially if we're able to get to the mineralization uh, even sooner. So this is going to be a very fun six months or so in front of us. We started drilling uh, with three drills at the very end of July. We've completed about 18 drill holes so far, and uh, we're expecting assays from them to start really trickling in very, very quickly here. And this is all very good timing for us because we're headed to Beaver Creek next week to what is probably the most consequential mining conference of the year where we've got slam schedule with corporates, institutions, analysts, uh, and we're going to be able to get out in front of them, show them these numbers, show them that this is going to be, you know, one of the 
higher margin projects in the industry with a clear path forward. And um, right after that, we've got a site visit with quite a few analysts, uh, many of who don't cover us currently, but I think well following the site visit. So it's going to be a bit of a, a doozy of a couple of weeks here in front of us. Well, you got some good news to share with everybody. So that's going to be fun to see how that gets traction with more investors, more analysts over the next couple of weeks, Andrew, and we'll see it out there at Beaver Creek. I want to dig in a little bit more to the uh, idea you said, obviously, you're going to try to convert categories from inferred to indicated. You're going to be trying to add ounces to you know blow out the NPV. But that area, that Northwest step out that's not included, just for people that may have a question about that, those 12 million ounces, you also mentioned that you're going to be doing some of that shallow surface drilling, looking to bring things in earlier in the mine plan. But isn't there also an area between that that's kind of a gap area that you could fill in that would, again, yeah. kind of complete yeah. the picture? So maybe talk to that. Yeah, that's correct. So really, it's the same... The vein system out in that northwest step out area is is just the extension of the vein system at DPB, and there's one kilometer along that that vein corridor of strike that we've yet to drill out. So that's actually the focus of what we're doing right now, um, where we're looking to establish mineralization linking those two areas together to make it just one big area, and that'll aim to backfill our mine life effectively and add a whole bunch more, many more years to it. You know, what's interesting is in terms of silver production, this is going to be averaging over 4 million ounces of just pure silver a year. And when you factor in the gold as a byproduct credit, you're getting a free ride on our silver. In fact, we're producing every, with the gold byproduct factored in, we're producing at negative 22 cents for every silver ounce we do here. And it's a Big production numbers in the sense, uh, from a domestic point of view, this this rivals um, Hecla's Lucky Friday mine in terms of potential silver production. And America only produced 32 million ounces of silver last year. So this has the uh, potential to increase America's silver production by over 12% once this gets going. So this is a big, big deal domestically. So as much as we're saying silver here, this is really a, almost a 50-50 split between gold and silver. Can you break down how this is allocated between these two precious metals, please? I mean, really, it all depends on the price you're realizing when you get it. Um, right now, it's more, you know, using our baseline numbers, uh, it's more gold, slightly more gold dominant. But I don't think anyone investing in silver is doing so with an outlook of 23 or $27, generally you know, it went, if we hit a good cycle, silver legs, and then it completely overshoots gold and that gold silver ratio plummets. And, you know, if that happens, then, you know, it becomes silver primary. Either way, you know, this is very unique as silver developers and producers go in the sense that it's just pure play precious metals. There's no zinc or base metals in there whatsoever. So, you know, our pesky byproduct here is gold. And as I said, if, you, if you're just interested in the silver aspect of it, you're getting a free ride on the silver production. And in fact, a negative ride because it's minus 22 cents an ounce as a cash cost uh, once you factor that in. Well, Andrew, could you also talk to, as you get going, you know, with any mine, you want to have enough CapEx to get it up and running. I think you have some contingency built in, so maybe speak to that, but then also the sustaining capital that you'll need to put into it. And how could that change if you're successful with the drilling that you're doing? Yeah, well, you know, the aim is, you know, a lot of the fixed costs are going to stay the same, right? We're using a 1,500 ton per day mill. You know, we've got a good uh, sense of the process plant and the site layout and all that. So a lot of that stuff's all going to be fixed. Where we can um, shave some of those numbers down is by hitting near surface projections of the same veins that we're modeling earlier on in the mine life. And that's what we're drilling now. So that would shorten the pre-production development time and um, uh, get us there sooner. In terms of contingency, well, you know, our CapEx right now is projected um, at $178 million, but that actually includes a 22 point something contingency built in there. So you know, if we're successful, we, you know, we'll see some savings uh, on that front uh, anyhow, but we think we'll be able to get the CapEx down with more drilling and we'll get the MPV up as we add more ounces, especially if we're successful in bringing on that, that Northwest deposit online. Okay. So as you said, Andrew, this is a snapshot in time. This is a PEA. You're doing a lot of drilling to upgrade ounces, to add ounces. What about all these meetings that you have coming up? Will they be focused on potential funding for a build here? Is it too early to talk about that because of the other aspects that could improve in this mine plan and also further economic studies that would have to be done? 
No, yeah, no, that's premature. What we're focused on now, I mean, we're fully financed through the end of the year. We we just did a $10 million bought deal back at the beginning of June, which I think yeah, you might have seen Eric Spot took down just under half of that and effectively doubled up on his position. This is his biggest investment he's made into a, a mining company this year, according to um, a slide I saw. Uh, a gold discovery on on X the other day. So uh, he doubled down, and and we've got twenty thousand meters of drilling to get under our belt. Really, you know, Beaver Creek is that wonderful time of year where you get to sit down with groups that you don't necessarily get to meet with um, throughout the year and and show them what you're doing. And I mean, this is one of the only new discoveries in the industry. I mean, when you look at the peers that were up against, I mean, a lot of those assets have been around for decades passed through company to company. Um, there's only been, you know, one or two other discoveries of merit in the last few years. And, you know, to go from discovery hole to, you know, first resource to second resource, and now economics in the span of, you know, about four years, you know, it's moving very, very quickly. But what this shows is, you know, the baseline credentials, this is going to be one of the lowest all in sustaining cost projects globally, that's highly sensitive to uh, higher metals prices. And, you know, as I said, it's, private land in Nevada off a highway. It's going to be hard not to stand out given just, you know, the direction the world's heading these days. Well, Andrew, we know there's going to be a lot of drilling released to the market over the next couple of months that we'll follow along with. But in addition to all that, maybe speak to some of the other de-risking work the team is doing as you move from a PEA, and I guess the next step would be a PFS. What kind of metallurgical work, permitting, what other information would you like to share about the de-risking of the project? Well, this study actually incorporates another pass of uh, metallurgy uh, that we did over the summer. In terms of, you know, a lot of that work also went into on the environmental side and hydrology side. So we're getting a better understanding of the path forward in terms of permitting this, getting our water rights sorted um, in the not too distant future here as, as now we've got a good understanding of exactly what we'll need. Um, and yeah, it's effectively the resolution on what sort of project this will be is becoming clearer by the day. And I think the next six months are going to be very telling because people can follow along in real time as we put out more drill results, as we confirm the continuity and convert the M&I, infer to M&I. You know, if we're successful there, that should see the average grade actually ratchet up as we won't be penalized for the spacing between as we tighten up the drill spacing. Uh, and certainly as we add more ounces and and seek to link up that kilometer of vein corridor to that Northwest step out area, people will be able to see once again, ounces are being added and that should have a huge positive consequence on our MPV, IRR, and really take this to the next level. Talk to us about valuation then here, Andrew, because look, the share price has mostly gone sideways this year, got a bounce in kind of late spring, early summer, and over the last few months has trended sideways, like a lot of the junior market for silver, gold, really resource companies. But now you have some economics around this asset. You're doing a lot of drilling. Do you have any comparisons that you can make valuation wise, company market cap wise to what this PEA is showing you? in terms of value? Yeah, well, listen, it, you know, this is going to, I think the back half of this year, we're going to be set to outperform. I mean, we've been out of the spotlight for a long time because, you, you know, we've been doing the unsexy things behind the scenes, like the mine planning and all the environmental and uh, all the things that go went into this and our scoping study and figuring out our drill program that doesn't necessarily lead to a lot of news flow, but then, you know, it allows us to come out with economics like this. And, you know, now with, you know, this is our largest drill program in two years, we're going to be reminding the market on a very consistent basis what a high grade quality project this is. So once the drill results start flowing and now that we've got now that, you know, the economics here make it very, very straightforward to people to comprehend that this is going to be a low capex, high margin producer uh, with significant room to grow, I think uh, we'll be set to outperform. I mean, if you look at it just as a enterprise value to MPV ratio, right now we're trading at 0.13. That's despite being one of the highest grade projects in the industry with a clear permitting path and being in a, the best jurisdiction you could possibly be in. Some of our other peer developers are trading at 0.5 or 0.6. So just on that basis, I mean, you know, we're 0.13 and they're trading at 0.5. I mean, that alone shows that, you know, as this gets going, we've got a huge opportunity to re-rate. And as I said, we're ready for a close-up. We're going to have a lot of news to finish out uh, the last 
half of the year here. And this just helps us establish our place on the radar that much more. Andrew, I'd love you just to share the average grade to remind people listening in that maybe you don't follow silver companies as much, what your average grade is on the resource you've already defined and compare that to what you would typically see in, let's say, Mexico or South America as a silver mine. There's not. nothing typical about this grade. Uh, you know what you're mining, the head grade here is about 570 grams per ton silver equivalent. You know, that's slightly less than Juan Escipio, That's slightly less than Silvercrest. Granted, we've got our M&I conversion should see that average grade ratchet up as we tighten up the drill spacing. So it's very, very similar to the two industry leaders. Uh, as developers go, I think we've got the highest grade head grade in the industry. Well then, Andrew, wrap us up with recapping news flow. You got a lot of drilling going on. What do investors need to watch out for? What will make this stock outperform in the tail end of this year? Well, listen, 8.6 million ounces of annual silver equivalent production at 1196, all in sustaining costs. Uh, it's got clear room to grow. And we've got drilling underway with a lot of news expected in the not too distant future. And, you know, I think by putting out economics too, this should increase our chances of getting inclusion into some of the ETFs too, uh, as most developers do get included and in, in, have an easier time of getting included there. So hopefully we'll get picked up there, certainly aim to pick up more analyst coverage over the coming weeks and months, because right now with these economics, the project's undeniable and, um, at this level, I mean, I don't really see much downside. So uh, it's going to be a wild ride to finish out the year. But to go from discovery hole to economics like this in four years and a clear path forward, yeah, I think the wind will be at our back. All right, Andrew, we'll wrap it up there. But looking forward to all the news flow to come. A great preliminary economic assessment here released to the market. And if people want to follow along with the news coming out of BlackRock Silver as it's released to the market, definitely click on the link below this interview. It takes you right over to the company website, straight to their news section, so you too can follow along as we see more assays come back in. Andrew, keep us posted as the expiration results roll in. We'll get you back on for an update and looking forward to our next conversation. And I might just interject that Beaver Creek's next week, and I'll be presenting on Tuesday at 1.15 p.m. Mountain Time. That's webcast live, and there's no registration. So just Google Precious Metal Summit uh, or Beaver Creek, and you'll you'll see that webcast. So yeah, tune in. It'll be the first time presenting this. And yeah, thank you very much for having me on here.